what a pleasure to be chatting with you guys today. The resident Australian, George. Yes, this feels yes. great. This is so awesome to hear another Aussie accent. It feels a little bit more like home. I, I was saying he should scull a water before this, and no one knows what I'm talking about when I say scull. Uh -huh. I have to say chug. Oh, so no. I just you like know what I mean. threw it against my head. <laughs> and I was like, is that what you mean? He's like, no. <laughs> this is how you just play with each other behind the scenes and stuff too. Yeah, well, we definitely like go over what translates in Australian and what doesn't. <laughs> the kind of brotherhood that you guys have created on screen between the disciples, how much of that is reflected in the behind the scenes experience on set? We're so close. Like we're, we're, we're super probably close. closer in real life. <laughs> we went I'm shopping kidding. the other day and we bought these shirts from, uh, from a, from a, a New Zealand outlet, so we're actually mm -hmm. legitimately like You're what matching. brothers are, like what brothers do. I just want to say when we went to go buy them, we did not plan this. We showed up and we had the exact same colors going <laughs> to the mall. And today we actually had to... I texted it's, him. It's been happening and I don't know why. I don't know what's in the air or mm -hmm. what what uh, coincidences are happening, but we've unintentionally worn the same tops and bottoms colors. I said, don't wear the blue one. <laughs> and then I was like, great, He's going like, back go to the back closet. Guys. The whole cast, like we play games, like, you know, on our time off, we play board games together. Mm -hmm. We play games on set, like while we're waiting, there's sometimes long wait. So the family you see on camera is the exact same family you see off camera. Mm. True. You're spending way too much time together. But the disciples, yeah. they're kind of our way in to the story of Jesus and the disciples. All of the different kind of questions you have reflect those that I think a lot of the audience ask when they go, I just don't get this parable. What's going on? 100%. Come season four, are the disciples in a position where you feel like they're a little bit more understanding of Jesus or where are they mm. at now? No, I, I would say that the the mystery continues. We, we're, we're just as baffled as everyone else is. And yes, the message is attracting more people, but we're also trying to figure out where exactly do we stand and where exactly are we going, mm. right? Jesus' omniscient view on things will sometimes leave us with a but wait, we thought you meant, and then it's like, no, I don't think he meant that. It's also as an as an actor, you know, it is we're season seven, uh, we're seven seasons, sorry. So, and we're in season four right now. We do want the audience to get the parables and whatnot, but it's also important for the audience to keep relating to these characters. And these characters are on a journey. We're in season four, you know, possibly in season seven is where you see a character arc complete. So, yeah, yeah the, the, you know. It's it's good news for the audience because you get that more relatability with the disciples because they mm. are constantly like missing the mark a bit and these two miss the mark a little bit in this season as big well, time, which is time. a little bit of a theme going on with these guys. Can you tell us some of your highlights of season four so far? Yeah, so I mean, there's a, you know, as James and John are trying to figure out where they sit in the their perception of hierarchy with within within the disciples of Jesus, we go ahead and ask, can we sit at your left and right hand? Spoiler alert. Wow, yeah, yeah, so that means spoiler alert. Um, you know, so and, you can and, see how they're missing the mark a little bit. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Jesus is doing these massive things and we're just like, um, we're, excuse me, yeah. uh, can we be important? <laughs> right, which is like, once again, very relatable. Mm -hmm. How many of us aren't like, uh, we don't feel that calling or we don't take it upon ourselves without realizing that maybe... It just needs to be what it is. Mm -hmm. And things need to play out in the time that's given as opposed to the time that we want them to. It's a really good thought. Yeah. And also, oh, I was going to say, going back to your original, you know, kind of question, like, do the disciples start to get it? Well, they still have to learn this concept of surrender. They want to control everything. Mm -hmm. And instead of just surrendering and having faith, yeah. they're, kind of, they're, they're, they're going, are we, are we going to, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? And Jesus is like, you, you're not, you, you're still you know? not really yeah. getting this. And it's important that they don't get it because that's where people watching the show can relate to it mm. and also learn a lesson themselves. Yeah. Right. Why do you think the show has resonated so much with people? Like four seasons in, there is such a global following for this series. Why do you think that is? I think the relatability is the biggest thing. Oops. Like we've been talking about, the disciples are real people. Um, but I always go back to this one scene that Dallas talked about with the miracle of the fish when Jesus approaches Simon and the miracle of the fish happens and Simon gets down on his knees and he looks up. I remember Dallas saying to me on the day in filming, he goes, I'm going to have Jesus go down to Simon's eyeline and I don't know how the audience is going to react to that because always that scene is depicted as, you know, God mm. and us. But Jesus in our scene, Jonathan gets down on one knee and he says, follow me. He doesn't say it from above. And I think that's what makes the show successful. Mm. It's the relatability. We're on the same level as as these disciples, we see Jesus dancing at the wedding at Cana. 
we're, we're seeing these people as real human beings and I think that's the main success of the show. And the fan relationship, I think, is something that sets apart The Chosen from so many other shows as well. We know it was heavily crowdfunded in its early days. It still is as well. How's that been for you guys, the relationship to fans so far? I mean, the feeding of the 5,000, we it's that is a great encapsulation of, of what the fans are for us because not only have they made the show, but there was a moment there where we're performing and I, I grew up, we, we're the same, we both started in theatre. Yeah, and one great thing you get from theatre is you get audience feedback, mm. right? Uh, with these scenes, we had 5,000 people as extras and we would complete a scene and, you know, Adam, our first, would say, yo, cut. And uh, the audience would just start cheering and clapping going, what a great performance from all you guys. And we're like... We get to do film and TV, plus we get the, you know, applause from an audience. Like a live audience. And these are the people that have not only funded the show, they're now in the show and they're listening. They are so in on it and they're just watching and they were such good performers. What other fan base does that? Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's the relationship we have. It is extraordinary. Mm. They, they, they lift us up. They lifted us up financially, right? And, like, now we're seeing how they can lift us up like with their participation in the show which, which I think is like super unique. I don't know mm. like what other shows like yeah, come on. We'll we'll teach you how to make your own wardrobe that's mm. period appropriate. It's like in wow. Lord of the Rings a bunch of orcs start yeah. like <laughs> congratulating <laughs> or something. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and have you seen the fan art that they're doing as well? Oh my god. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. They've actually there's been some fan art where they have done stuff in the future, I've seen some fan art where they've had Jesus on the cross, and it's it's very subtle art. So they don't do full features; they just mm. do like shadow, but it still looks like us. Mm. And something that is both energizing and a little bit like daunting for me is we know that John will end up right next to the cross when Jesus is crucified, but they have yeah. Jonathan's image up there, and then they have um, so they have Jonathan up there, and they have me down the bottom, and it looks like me. It's the same mm. green tunic, and I'm like, whoa. So the art is not only of this moment, but they're also predicting what things could happen. It looks spectacular. These people are so talented. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think just, like, seeing the variation from, like, caricature cartoons with, like, big features to, like, John. Uh, like John. John. My name is George. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm James. Hey, hey, James. <laughs> but uh, seeing how, you know, like more of that, like uh, like just the outline of things. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the fan art is is truly something that I'm like, oh, I'm going to repost that. That's pretty cool. And the yeah. memes are hilarious as well. Yeah. I can't believe how funny the memes are. That's also I art. I believe we're memes. <laughs> we're memes. We're memes. You guys have been turned into online humor. Like this is, yeah. you've, you've made it. One I mean, of the people's favorite is when. Season seven. But. Yeah. <laughs> one of people's favorite is when uh, when the, the Samaritans are throwing rocks at Jesus and we go up to like fight and then he goes like this mm -hmm. and you can see him like shake. I think I think a lot of people have been in that position where somebody must have thrown a stone at you and mm -hmm. you just want to but it, there's just that yeah that Hold thing that back. holds you back yeah. Yeah, and it's a yeah. good lesson as well like no matter how driven and angry you can be channel that passion for righteous reasons don't mm -hmm. don't incite violence or anything yeah. like that look at that that's some good wisdom and there there is so much that can be taken away from this show as you guys have worked on it what are some of the things that you've really I suppose taken away and perhaps learned in your own ways. Something that really touched me this season was um, it's it's not only, we can obviously see with like Feeding of the 5,000, the impact on the fans, but sometimes we get fan interaction of our own. And we had uh, a couple of fans visit set and uh, we actually had two sisters, an older one and a younger one. The younger one had just beaten cancer. And the mother came up to, came up to me and said, uh, when the older sister was at school, they were actually making fun of kids with cancer, cancer. Wow. and it was her younger sister and she had a James and John moment. She had, she brought the thunder and she had <laughs> to be held back. And the mother said they both, that moment reminded both of them of the Sons of Thunder and it made that switch in their head of, no, 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 this is not the right way to go about this. And that yeah. was just so impactful for me. It's it's uh, it's not just, you know, that the the fans are, um, are with us in terms of being fans and watching the show, but... Uh, they're living the same stories that we are. It's 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 out of this world, honestly. That, that, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's it. Like that, they're watching this content, and it's not like, oh, I'm gonna put on a cape and fly, right? Like it's like, oh, I had this moment, and there's an ability for me to learn mm. from here, right? To to be guided by this, which is. Like, it, it is a real privilege. Mm. Yeah, something very cool. And we're excited to see what comes over the next few seasons as well, guys. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank, Thank you. you.
I don't believe it was stained glass windows and statues and paintings that we see where he's so formal and distant and reverent. I don't believe that thousands would have wanted to be around him all the time. I do believe that he was magnetic and charismatic and funny and compelling. Now, that's different from successful. They say the struggle is real. I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you. I don't buy into the luck. I put my faith and my trust in my team. Everything that we done been through. I, 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 gasoline in my veins.